So, um, so I might have like several questions in one here, but um, <clears throat> so from the um, Solaris, uh, Solaris, um, it okay. So first of all, it is how, how is the live upgrade fit in this? Is, are you uh, implementing the live upgrade in terms because you're still using zones? So um, now. If I was, it, it kind of gets into, would there be any like advantage? What would, what would the strategy be? What I, so so how does, what if I wanted multiple um, instances of, of um, smart OS or another, or, or say a Lumos or, or open Solaris? Sure, so, so I'm not dealing with uh, so if Linux I, at all. If, if I understand your question, if, if I'm running OS level virtualization, how do I actually handle upgrade across all of those different instances? Right, and, and, and how do the, I coordinate the, that? the corollary is, is it make any sense to be, you know, putting um, OS instances into KVM instead of just traditional zones, which would be, you know. Um, so I would say generally no, so let's, I'll answer the second question first, which is, does it make sense to do OS level virtualization stuff, traditional OS level virtualization into yeah. zones, sorry, into KVM? Yes, yeah, so um, like all my guests are just going to be smart. So I would say for the KVM perspective, um, no. So basically by doing hardware virtualization, you've basically necessitated a performance impact. You've actually made your life a lot harder. So for example, say you want to actually have really good networking performance. A lot of people solve this by doing correct dev device assignment, which actually then breaks any hopes of ever doing migration because now you, know, you have limited PCI slots. You only can have so many 10 gig NICs, and if you're directly assigning them to them, that ends up being issues. There's lots of other areas where there's more overhead, and there's kind of, basically you're always inducing some kind of overhead by that, and it's always going to be less, and you're always going to be able to get more tenancy and put more on a box with using OS level virtualization. So to address the issue of how you do live upgrade then, so the way SmartOS is designed is that we use sparse zones by default. So the core operating system is all based on, is all loaded from RAM disk, so, and by the core operating system, this refers to basically the Lumos core, or ON, which is a series of the libs, stuff like the kernel, all the drivers, libc, kind of core system libraries, and that's all basically loaded from there and then basically mounted read-only into zone. So basically you can get a read-only copy of that in each zone. So the way SmartOS is designed to be upgraded is you just take a reboot, you're gonna get a new set of, you basically can switch out the platform and put a new one in there, and then all your zones will automatically be upgraded to get that. Then the question of how you do package management is now separated, and making sure you're up to date on packages is separated from the question of what are the core system libraries. Does that kind of help answer that? Yeah, I mean, I've just seen like I've had issues where with traditional Solaris, um, you know, live upgrade in zones, we now have to um, basically copy all of this stuff, the zones, into the, the live upgrade. Uh, ABE, which is essentially another snapshot, but there seems to be. So we, we, do, we don't use the traditional B's boot environments that are there in Smara, so um, I can give you a lot more detail on that if you're okay. curious. Okay, sure. Then, that's it. Um, well, and just one quick follow up to that yeah. is there any uh, management applications, management uh, tools in terms of managing um, foreign guest OS's in this? Um, so there's tools to basically manage the process of launching Kimu and basically how you manage all the different zones and all the different VMs that exist. We've unified the zone, the traditional zone management with VM management. Um, in terms of tools for actually managing the guest, like give me like, you need templates, managing templates. So basically we have basically support for all of that and there are some basic, we don't supply predefined managing templates for VMs. Um, we do for for containers, but we don't for VMs, and that's, but those are, basically it's designed that if you create your own template, you could then use that, and it would be easy for you to use that yourself for everything. So you could then just receive that on, do a ZFS receive onto every, every node that you wanted to, to install that template, and then use that as part of your provisioning process.